Chapter 4 When his mother called from China, Wahoo was brushing his teeth. He heard his dad say, Susan, your boys are miserable. Please fly home. Wahoo spit out the toothpaste froth and ran to the living room. Mickey cupped a hand over the phone and whispered, It's eight in the morning in Shanghai. She's finishing breakfast. Can I talk with her? Egg noodles again? She's going to overdose on carbs. Please, Wahoo said. Mickey handed over the phone. So much drama, Wahoo's mom said to him. For heaven's sake, doesn't your father ever give it a rest? Do you think I want to be here? We took a big TV job. Actually, he's doing better. But what about the headaches? Gone, he says. Keep a close watch on him, Wahoo's mother advised. She asked about school. Wahoo said he thought he did okay on his finals. Even Spanish? That was a killer, he admitted. As long as you tried your best. Miss you, Mom. I miss you too, big guy. This really sucks. Wahoo swallowed hard uh, to keep his voice from cracking. He didn't want her to know how bummed he felt because she was so far away. I found your hotel on Google Earth, he said. Looks pretty sweet from the satellite. Tell me about the TV thing, she said. It's real good money. But is it a good job? Yeah, awesome, Wahoo said, thinking, when you're broke, any job is a good job. Mickey Cray piped up, hey, my turn, give it here. Wahoo told his mother goodbye and went outside with a five-gallon bucket of cat food for the raccoons. He was the only kid in school whose father was a professional animal wrangler, and life in the Cray household definitely wasn't routine. Still, despite his missing thumb, Wahoo was able to do most normal things. He'd taught himself to write, shoot baskets, and throw a baseball with his left hand. He could even turn a clean 360 on his wakeboard when his dad had time to take him out on the boat. One normal thing the Crays couldn't do together was go on summer vacations. Mickey didn't trust anybody else to take care of the animals. One time, when Wahoo's Aunt Rose had passed away, the whole family flew up to West Virginia for the funeral. Mickey had asked Donnie Dander to look after the critters, which turned out to be an expensive mistake. The crays were gone only three days, but during that short time, two rare parrots escaped, a lemur caught the flu, and Alice bit the tail off of a crocodile. Where's the darned aspirin? Mickey hollered from the house. On the kitchen counter next to the coffee machine, Wahoo called back. The raccoons were always excited to see him because Wahoo's arrival meant it was meal time. When he entered the enclosure, they clustered around him, chittering noisily and tugging, tugging with their hand-like paws at his pockets. He poured the cat chow equally into four separate dishes, one for each corner, so that the hungry animals would split up. Whenever they stayed in one group, vicious fighting would erupt over the food. So loud was the screeching and snarling that one time a neighbor had phoned the police because she feared a gruesome murder was taking place behind the Cray house. Wahoo slipped out of the raccoon pen, padlocked the gate, and began washing his hands with a garden hose. Don't forget the soap, mate, a voice said behind him. Wahoo spun around there, and there stood Derek Badger. At his side was Raven Stark. Take me to your alligator, Derek commanded. I better go get my dad. Hurry then, chop chop. Raven Stark spoke up. Derek's totally exhausted. He traveled all night from Paris. A wretched flight, said Derek. Didn't sleep a wink. Wahoo had no trouble believing it. The man's eyelids were puffy. His pale cheeks were blotched. And his hair, more orange than blonde, was matted and oily. He wore black loafers with no socks, wrinkled white linen trousers, and an untucked safari-style shirt that failed to hide his roundish belly. To Wahoo, Derek Badger looked more like a groggy tourist than a sturdy survivalist. I'm on a tight schedule, he said, glancing at his wristwatch. Wahoo ran to the house and returned with his father. Raven Stark handled the introductions. Mickey managed to smile as he shook Derek's hand. We're looking forward to working with you, Mickey said, which wasn't exactly true, but it sounded good. Wahoo appreciated his father's effort to be respectful. Staging a nature show for a network star like Derek was a big deal. If everything went smoothly, it might lead to more TV jobs. Let's go see Alice, shall we, said Raven Stark. The gator was snoozing on the bank of the pond. Derek took one look at the huge reptile and said, She's perfect! 
Then she, he turned to Raven Stark. When can we move her? Move her, Mickey asked. Raven Stark said, we're going to be shooting on location out by the Tamiani Trail. Wahoo thought, here we go. She weighs 620 pounds, his father said. Derek chuckled, no worries, mate. We'll hire a crane and a truck. Mickey Cray stepped closer to Derek. Alice doesn't travel, he said. You want Alice? Shoot the scene here. Years earlier, Wahoo's father had constructed a small but convincing Everglades set at one, of, one end of the property. There was a lush pool 10 feet deep, complete with pickle, pickerel weed and water lilies for staging underwater scenes. Derek didn't want to hear about it. Save your petty little lake for an air freshener commercial. Mickey said, if it's good enough for Disney, it's plenty good enough for you, mate. Wahoo worried that his father would say or do something so insulting that he'd lose the expedition survival job even before it got started. Raven Stark edged between the men. What about us? What about the smaller gators? They fit in the back of my pickup, said Wahoo's father. They travel fine. Derek looked down at Alice, who was still asleep. She's the only one I want, he declared. Then he turned and stalked off. In a stiff tone, Raven Stark said, Mr. Cray, you signed a contract. Which I intend to use as toilet paper. Wahoo cut in with a bluff. Our lawyer looked at the contract. She said it won't stick. Julie wasn't really a lawyer yet, but it wouldn't be long. Good luck finding another tame alligator like Alice, Mickey said. Raven Stark bristled. We paid you a deposit, remember? $800. Good luck finding that, too. Wahoo volunteered to show the fake Everglades set to Derek so he could see for himself how authentic it looked. Raven walked to the car to get him, but she returned alone. He's on the phone, she reported soberly, with our producers in California. Mickey mumbled something sarcastic under his breath and headed back to the house. Look, we can still make this work, Wahoo said to Raven. Not if your father insists on being difficult. I'll deal with, deal with Pop, okay? <laughs> You're only a kid, no offense. Wahoo tried to remain polite. I'm his kid. He listens to me. And you guys need the money, right? Raven looked around the pens and cages. It's got to be expensive keeping all these animals. It would be a nice payday for your family, no? Wahoo felt his throat tighten. Tell Mr. Badger we're on. Raven was smiling. How old are you, Wahoo? Old enough to get it done, he said. Back at the house, he found his father lying on the couch with an ice pack over his forehead. Wahoo sat down beside him. Pop, this show is really important. So's Alice, Mickey reached for the TV remote. Hey, look what I tv look what I tv would the other night. He touched a button and an episode of Expedition Survival came on the screen. Derek Badger roaming a rainy jungle in Costa Rica. A, a teaser at the beginning showed the star sleeping in the hammocks made of vines while a fat, hairy spider crawled up his bare arm. Wahoo's father shook a scarred finger at the TV. Five bucks says he kills that thing and fries it up for dinner. Now, I'm not taking that bet. You know there's a cameraman standing two feet away with a can of Raid ready to blast that poor pitiful tarantula. It's showbiz, said Wahoo. The guy's such a tool. I know, Pop, but we need the work. They watched the program for a little while longer. Sure enough, Derek Badger pretended to awaken just before the creeping spider reached his neck. Then he knocked it away, stomped it with a boot. He didn't fry the flattened victim, though. He grilled it over a small fire, all the time smacking his wormy lips and yammering about how he'd narrowly escaped a horrible, painful death. However, Wafu and his father, Wahoo and his father knew something that most faithful viewers of Expedition Survival didn't know. That tarantulas almost never bite people. When they do, the sting is no worse than a bumblebee's. Grumbling in disgust, Mickey Cray switched off the TV and tossed the remote onto the coffee table. The other shows we've done, even the lame ones, were all about the wildlife, he said. But this is just about him. Wahoo didn't like the idea of working for Derek Badger any more than his father did. Pop, 
We've got bills to pay, he said. Alice needs to eat, right? Okay, but Alice doesn't travel, and that's final. Fine, Alice doesn't travel, said Wahoo, but you've got to admit, it would have been fun watching those bozos try to haul her out of the pond. Mickey Cray laughed. Oh, yeah. Five. Although she said she, uh, although she would never say it aloud, Raven Stark believed she was grossly underpaid. Her job title was senior production assistant, but in reality, she was also a babysitter, nurse, chauffeur, bartender, courier, valet, personal groomer, and amateur psychologist. Derek Badger was a handful. We're late, she said, knocking once more on the door of his hotel suite. There was still no response, so she used the plastic key card. Derek wasn't inside the room. He was standing on the balcony overlooking a golf course. Raven said, for heaven's sake, put on some clothes. The star of Expedition Survival was clad only in tartan boxer shorts and a pair of black knee-high socks. It wasn't a pretty sight. I refuse to work with that ignorant redneck, he said, meaning Mickey Cray. People are staring, Derek. Let's go inside. Are you telling me that the, that the only humongous alligator available in South Florida, which is the humongous alligator capital of the world? Raven was quite familiar with Derek's tantrums. This particular specimen happens to be perfect for what we need. Perfect, how, he whined. Time to put on your pants. Let's go. The script for Derek's Everglades adventure called for him to swim beside a huge gator, which required renting one that would tolerate Derek's nonsense and resist the urge to bite off his fool head. Mickey Cray's son had assured Raven that Alice had never purposefully hurt anybody. He'd again blamed himself for the thumb removal and that the reptile was accustomed to the noisy presence of camera crews. But we can't stage our biggest scene in some nitwit's backyard, Derek complained in the car traveling to the Cray's house. Raven assured him that the family's Everglades set didn't look like a backyard. It looks like a real-life swamp. You'll be impressed. Derek sniffed. No, they'll be impressed when they see me jump that monster gator. Not happening. The insurance company says no way. They said the same thing about the cobra dance, but I did it anyway. Thanks for reminding me, thought Raven. They had been shooting Expedition Survival in Cambodia when Derek decided to play Snake Charmer with a spitting cobra that had been rented from a local handler named Mr. Na. When Mr. Na saw what Derek was doing, he leaped between Derek and the dangerous reptile just as it released a jet of deadly poison. A few drops landed in Mr. Na's hair, and as a precaution, he rushed off to take a shower. Upon returning to the set of Expedition Survival, Mr. Na was dismayed to learn that Derek had popped chopped up his pet snake with a rusty machete and eaten it for supper in the program's final scene. Oops. The craze won't let you lay a finger on Alice, Raven said. Derek chuckled to himself. We shall see about that. What sort of people would name a dumb old alligator Alice? The sort of people who treat it like one of the family? Hillbillies, Derek said. Did you bring extra cash? The crew of the television program arrived early to set up. With an amazement of cameramen and lightning te lighting technicians, well, with amazement, the cameramen and lighting technicians watched Mickey Cray lead Alice from her enclosure to the swamp-like Everglades set at the other end of the property, swishing her thick armored tail for balance. The huge gator trailed Mickey like a puppy. He was carrying a plump, thawed chicken under each arm, so Alice would have followed him anywhere. Wahoo was busy tending to the crippled bobcat, trying to coax it to eat. The poor thing was limping in circles around the new pen, still frazzled by the long truck ride from Highlands County. Every now and then, the cat would scrabble up and down the old telephone pole that Mickey had planted for that very purpose. Still, it took Wahoo almost an hour to get the animal calm enough to nibble from a dish. He arrived on the Everglades set just as Derek Badger was emerging from the air-conditioned motor coach that served as his dressing room. The vehicle was jet black and as big as a Greyhound bus. Derek wore crisply pressed khaki shorts, a matching safari shirt, and hiking boots splattered with wet oatmeal to look like mud. What a poser, Mickey said. Chill out, Pop. 
don't we have some fire ants? That's enough. A rumpled assistant in orange sneakers and a corduroy vest began spraying something on Derek Badger's arms and legs. Wahoo assumed it was insect repellent until the man in the vest told Derek to shut his eyes and then misted his face. What is that stuff? Wahoo asked Raven Stark. Spray on tan, she said matter-of-factly. Wahoo thought that even a showbiz survivalist should have a real tan, but evidently nothing about Derek Badger was real. The star went back to the motor coach to await his bronze glow while the TV crew snacked on donuts and bagels. Wahoo helped his father trim a patch of sawgrass to clear space for one of the three cameras that would be filming the water scenes. How's Alice? Wahoo asked. Pigged out and happy, his dad said. The well-fed gator was resting at the bottom of the brackish lagoon. Every now and then a pair of bubbles would float to the surface, betraying the location of the animal's nose. Where's the gun? Raven asked Mickey Cray. Oh, relax. He lifted his t-shirt to reveal the butt of a pistol he was carrying on his waist. The contract with Expedition Survival required Mickey to keep a firearm with him in case something went wrong and one of the critters attacked. It's a 45, Mickey said. Feel better? Raven went to retrieve Derek while Wahoo fetched the snapping turtle that would be featured in the first segment. Even though the turtle was bulky, Wahoo carried it at arm's length from his body. The snapper had a long, flexible neck and was lightning quick on the strike. Doesn't this one have a name? Derek asked snidely. How about Timmy the Terrible Turtle? Wahoo ignored him. He set the craggy reptile beside the pool and backed out of the scene. The director, a shaggy bearded guy, yelled, We're rolling! Immediately, Derek knelt down and positioned his glossy face beside the turtles, although he wasn't nearly as close as the camera made it appear. Breathlessly, he began reciting the lines he had memorized from his script. These snapping turtles are one of the most ferocious predators in the Everglades. Their camouflage look exactly like a mossy rock, and their sharp, powerful jaws unlock to reveal a juicy, worm-like tongue, which they deviously wiggle as bait. Derek abruptly halted and said, Cut! He motioned impatiently to Mickey Cray. We definitely need to see Timmy's tongue. His name's not Timmy, said Wahoo's father, and I can't make him open his yap if he doesn't want to. Then what are we paying you for? Mainly to keep you out of the emergency room. Excuse me? Wahoo quickly stepped forward. Mr. Badger, the turtle only wiggles his tongue underwater when he's hungry. That's just great, Derek looked over at Raven. I had a bad feeling about this whole operation, didn't I tell you? Wahoo's dad said, you want to see the inside of his mouth? He broke a thin branch off a pine tree and stripped away the sprigs and handed it to the TV star. Try this. Raven grew concerned. Derek, you be careful. Yes, mum, he laughed and got down on his knees again, this time a bit closer to the turtle. As soon as the camera started rolling, he used the sharp end of the branch to poke at the pointy snout of the reptile, which shut its eyes and drew itself into its shell. Come on, terrible Timmy, Derek cooed. Say, ah. Wahoo knew he had to do something fast. Quietly, he moved behind the cameraman nearest to Derek and made a pushing motion with both hands, a signal to back off. Either Derek didn't see him or pretended not to. The bite was a hissing blur. Everyone flinched at the crack of the branch being chomped in half, a few short inches from Derek's wide eyes. He gasped in surprise and tumbled sideways into the lagoon. The turtle wasn't far behind, paddling furiously toward the cool, quiet bottom where Alice the alligator had been, until that moment, peacefully snoozing. The director hollered, Cut! Cut! Mickey Cray was applauding. Hey, that's good stuff! Two crew members hurried forward to drag Derek, cursing from the water. The beak of the snapping turtle had peeled a sliver of flesh from the tip of his artificially tanned nose, now punctuated with a bright red dot of blood. Raven Stark angrily cornered Wahoo and his father. You two think this is funny? Derek could have been maimed. Mickey shrugged. That's why they're called snappers, not yawners. You're the one who gave him the stick. Well, it's better than using a finger, said Mickey. Right, son? Wahoo nodded ruefully, displaying the fleshy bump where his right thumb once had been. Behind him, Derek was bellowing at the director, ordering him to erase all the video footage of the turtle encounter.
If I see one minute of that on YouTube, everybody on this crew is fired, Derek warned as he toweled off. And I mean everybody. Next, they tried to, the python, Beulah. Wahoo and his father uncoiled the beautiful multi-hued constrictor and laid her out at full length. The script called for Derek to creep up and seize Beulah behind her head, instigating a fake life-or-death struggle. Mickey Cray didn't mention that Beulah had tried to eat his foot a few days earlier. The swelling had gone down and his limp was barely noticeable. Over Derek's objections, Mickey insisted on conducting a rehearsal so he could demonstrate the safest way to handle a big snake. Derek barely paid attention. Piece of cake, mate, he kept saying. Sometimes she bites, Wahoo reminded him. Ha, show you're afraid because animals can sense it, said Derek. Never show you're afraid because animals can sense it, said Derek. Do you even know what a true primal fear smells like? Not really. Asparagus? Derek's eyes narrowed as he tried to figure out if he'd just been insulted. As it turned out, Beulah showed no interest in biting anyone during the run-through. She was sleepy and sluggish, her belly still full from the microwave chickens that Wahoo had fed her after she'd tried to make a meal of his father. Okay, this one's for real, the said the director. Action! Soon Derek was crawling through Mickey Cray's manicured palmetto scrub, whispering dramatically into a bug-sized microphone clipped on his collar sh shirt. As if the Everglades weren't dangerous enough, in recent years, this tropical river of grass has been invaded by lethal predators from another continent, Burmese pythons. Imported by wildlife brokers for the exotic pet trade, hundreds and hundreds of baby pythons got scattered through the glades when Hurricane Andrew destroyed breeding farms west of Miami. Now, all of those cute little buggers have grown into fierce Levithonians, some of them 20 feet long. Cut, the director called. What's wrong, snapped Derek. That bit was totally brilliant. The word is Leviathan, not Levithanian. They attempted the scene ten, nine more times, but Derek couldn't get the pronunciation right. Finally, the director gave up. Forget it, okay? Just say monster instead. Derek nailed it on the first take. Now all those cute little snakes have grown into voracious monsters, some of them 20 feet long. They can swallow a whole deer, a panther, and yes, even a human being. Today, I'm crawling through the most remote, untouched, and dangerous stretch of the Everglades, following the trail of an enormous wild python. And look, there she is. With a cameraman on his heels, Derek wriggled forward and pounced with tri a triumphant cry upon Beulah. He locked both hands two feet below her head, which was just about the worst place to grab a snake. Wahoo was surprised that Beulah didn't twist around and sink his, her chompers into Derek's fat face. I've got her! I've caught the beast, he crowed. The python wasn't particularly concerned. She hooked her tail around one of Derek's ankles, but didn't even tighten up. Grunting and huffing, he rolled back and forth on the ground, shaking Beulah by the neck, trying to provoke her to fight back. It was like wrestling with a 14-foot noodle. All Beulah wanted to do was curl up and take a nap. Wahoo glanced at his father and didn't like what he saw. Mickey Cray was clenching and unclenching his fists. Derek panted into the microphone. Whatever happens, I can't let this jungle killer wrap her massive coils around my chest. She would literally crush the life out of me. Mickey turned to his son. That's what I'm fixing to do, he whispered. Literally. No, Pop, wait. It was too late. Wahoo's dad hurled himself furiously at Derek Badger, but the double vision caused him to miss. Mickey got up, dusted off, and tried again. This time, he scored a direct hit, clinching both arms around Derek's pudgy midsection. He dragged him away from the dizzy python and began to squeeze with all his might. Cut, cut, cried the director. Are you nuts? Somebody stop this lunatic. The crew members seemed entertained by the scuffle. No one except Wahoo made a move to rescue Derek. By the time Wahoo was able to unfasten his dad, the famous survivalist's face had turned the color of cranberries. He was down on all fours, coughing and whimpering with Raven Stark at his side, brushing the leaves and twigs from his hair. Now you've done it, Wahoo said. His father looked somber. Let's, me, let's move Beulah back to her tank. Mickey took the front half while Wahoo hoisted the tail section. That's the worst excuse for a python I ever saw, 
It was Derek lurching to his feet. You call that a snake? Ha! I call it an overstuffed earthworm. Beulah opened her shovel-sized mouth and burped, displaying rows of hook-shaped teeth. Derek cringed and hopped backward. Take a hike, advised Mickey Cray. What? You heard me, dork man. Raven stood speechless. Wahoo noticed some of the cameramen chuckling. Derek stiffened. Listen, mate, we've got a contract. Are you kidding, said Mickey. Wahoo and his dad began hauling the hefty python toward the snake tanks. Hey, what about the gator? Derek Badger shouted after them. Over my dead bodies, Mickey said. Three grand for a scene with Alice. Cash. Pop, you hear that? Wahoo whispered. Hear what? 3,500, Derek called out. Pop, come on. Keep walking. Four grand, cried Derek. Four thousand dollars. Mickey Cray turned around smiling. That I heard. Here's where we'll stop today.